digital presence. It is Wednesday. It is noonish. Uh, this is the life. I'm your host, Don Smith. Uh, thanks for tuning in again. Uh, if you did, I don't know. I'm just I'm just assuming that occasionally people tune in. Uh, they got me a new pop filter today. I'm not sure who left that in the studio, but thank you. We'll we'll see if that makes a difference in how I sound, so I can go pit 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 and not uh, not ruin the whole show, which is what I've always wanted to do. I've always <laughs> wanted to go pit pit on the air, and that now I can do it now you can. and not be uh, self conscious about. <laughs> uh sitting in the studio with me i'll go ahead and introduce my uh my guests in the studio uh haroon khan the uh actor what what all do you do because there's all kinds of things i saw on there uh i didn't even look at your resume yet you, oh. you handed me your resume and i just i just ignored it i uh <laughs> i no, it is uh first of all thank you for having me on the show um it's uh very grateful and humble to be here and uh as i was telling you a few minutes ago most people butcher my name on the first attempt and you did it perfectly so kudos to you well i i have a complicated name myself don smith has really <laughs> a, a lot of people mispronounce that right off the bat too but. I see the different <laughs> variations but no you you hit on the mark um primarily uh, i am a college student at the university of cincinnati uh, oh, but aside okay. from that i'm not in the classroom i am a professional um, actor a film producer and then a model also if people find me beautiful enough which some days it is, some days it's God get away from me. You're, you're not my type, but I can definitely <laughs> see it. <laughs> I think that was a compliment. <laughs> well, it's, it's it's good to have you in. Uh, we, we can start right off. You can tell us about some of the projects you're working on uh, currently, or some that you have worked on. Yeah, uh, I, you have a a big list here, so you've definitely been a lot busier than me in acting. So, <laughs> well, I'll I'll jump right in. Um, so. Basically, I like you had mentioned. We have I have had the great pleasure of being a part of a lot of productions, whether they're small scale to major motion or anything in in between. Um, but we currently just finished, um, or almost are finishing back to back indie film productions. Um, so, and these by far, and I'm sorry to past directors, but these by far the two closest to my heart. Um, because of the sentimental value, the script and the screenplay brung. Um, so they're called Empty Space and Dilemma are the two indie, uh, medium length short films, um, to both that will be submitting to like festivals like Sundance, uh, South by Southwest, Tribeca, Toronto, all of the major film festivals. Um, so we actually finished Empty Space a month ago. Um, and we shot that in Cincinnati, greater area and Chicago. And then the other film, uh, which we are this close to being wrapped, that's, is... Uh, that's a lot of films I've worked on. Are always <laughs> this, this, this close to being <laughs> But you got to start somewhere. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but, uh, no, yeah, those are the two uh, latest and greatest productions so far. Cool. Uh, can you give us a synopsis on... Yeah. Um, uh, without... No, no spoilers, but... Zero spoilers on No, no spoilers. Yeah, it since is... They're not, since they're not out yet. They're still they are waiting still, to go to festivals. So. Uh, do, would you want like the full fledged synopsis or just like the brief? Whatever you can give me, whatever you're comfortable giving me. <laughs> I will give both. Oh, okay. <clears throat> this morning, try my dramatic voice. <laughs> um, but the first film uh, is called Dilemma. That's the one that we are still filming uh, later on. Um, that's the one where my uh, director will be showing up. Um, but that is scheduled to come out late fall 2017, knocking on wood every day. Uh, but that is scheduled to come out late fall 2017. And um, the synopsis is, it's a romantic thriller. That's what it's classified as, the film. And the synopsis is um, pretty straightforward. It has that typical vibe. 
um, but I'll go ahead and say it. It's pretty much a young woman named Lizzie. Um, that's the leading female, is in hiding after killing her abusive boyfriend who's associated with the mob. Think of your typical Italian mafia mm. gangster flick. Um, meanwhile, Alistair Ross is the character that I play. Um, he's a gun for hire, and he's to find and complete his assignment, eliminate Elizabeth Stevens. So, well, you you look, you're dressed for the part today. As <laughs> a, as a high, I was actually worried. When I saw you coming up, I thought, this guy's fixing to take me out. <laughs> <laughs> In case if anything goes wrong, I may pull something underneath yeah, yeah, my belt. They, well, I, you wouldn't be the first. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but no, you did dress up for radio, which is nice. I don't, That's, <laughs> thank you. I've, I've been told that well, on an off day, if I don't have any, if I just have meetings or stuff with producers or directors, I'm not, and if I'm not in class, it's pretty much this minus the jacket. And oh. to me, it's like my casual get up. And, that's uh, so that's kind good of, to know. I uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're the best dressed <laughs> guest I've had, in the, except for Father Time. There was a comedian named Father Time that came in in a three piece suit. Oh wow! Commitment. And he specifically to do radio, which was oh. uh, I, like that was I remind focus. him. I said, "You realize this is just audio; nobody can see you." <laughs> <laughs> oh. But um, if you knew Father Time, you'd understand. Cause I would because I feel like if, even a, if there's uh, no video, even if there's audio. If someone's listening to you, they can somewhat picture kind of what you look like. Yeah, they, they can hear if you're dressed casually or not. They they can hear if you if you look like a slob like me. That's why no, I keep look... I keep getting emails. You know, you should dress better on the air because we're tired of hearing you dressed shabbily. Like you have said, I am probably one of the most nice dressed guests. You are the most simple yet elegant dressed host. I I, I don't know. If had... that's, you just called me simple. I don't know if I simple in a good way. Simple in a good. Way. I can say simple in a bad way. Like you are simple. You're just so I, simple. I, I simple and elegant. <laughs> And well, elegant that works because, for I, example, I've never been called that. I've been called simple, like, for example, <laughs> Steve Jobs, he was simple, but yeah, there he you was, go, there you go. he had like that elegance. So, you give yeah, off that vibe I as just well. if I had the money. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, yeah, the film is pretty much about it's around uh, Alistair Ross, who's the gun for hire, and then Lizzie, who obviously is the love interest, and um, Alistair's a gun for hire. and his assignment is to find and complete his assignment, eliminate Elizabeth Stevens. And on top of dealing with his own issues of being alone and wanting more out of life, because he is heading down a depressed kind of road. And he meets Lizzie along the way, but he has no idea she is his intended target and obviously begins to fall in love with her, um, as does Lizzie. But when the wrong people find out, he has 24 hours to kill his true love or be killed himself. Oh, well, there you go. Um, so I kind of paraphrase Decisions, decisions. Decisions, hence the name <laughs> Dilemma, and I kind of paraphrase the synopsis, but it's pretty much a cliched love story with a twist. Uh, what kind of a twist? You'll have to tune in and find right. out. Right. No spoilers. Um, <laughs> but I tried my hardest because last time I described it because I've read the synopsis and I've lived and breathed this film. I almost gave away the spoilers. Right. I realized, yeah. wait, you weren't part of the production. <laughs> you can't get the... Yeah. Ins and outs, but um, yeah, that's uh, classified as a romantic thriller. So, any right. of the romantic thriller fans out there, uh, be prepared. Yeah, sounds interesting. Yeah, in interviews, it's it's sometimes hard to not give away stuff you know about a movie. Yep. As I I was in one over the summer. It's actually still out in Redbox, and my character at one point is supposed to be thought dead, and it's out there long enough now. I can go ahead and say I, I come back at the end. <laughs> <laughs> Re- well, Reggie, for all Reggie the, lives. For all the viewers out there, spoiler just happened. Yes, yes. I just spoiled my own movie. so. <laughs> <laughs> but it was hard to talk about that character because it was, you know, that was a big part of his thing is that he, sure. uh, everybody thought he was dead because he should have been. But uh, Little see, it, was, it was a zombie movie, and my, my theory on that was even though he was attacked by zombies, zombies eat brains, and Reggie was a little short on them. Ah. So they didn't have, you know, they didn't bother with him. He was <laughs> they just let him they, be. Yeah, he, they just assumed he was one of their mindless masses and just left him alone. Wow, what was uh, it called? The uh, Six Feet Below Hell. I've heard of that. I have a few friends that are in the. Um, oh, William Lee. Yeah, 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 yeah he's the director. Yeah, name dropping William Lee. Yeah, that's that's uh, okay. I've done that before in here. He's, but he's no, been yeah. in here. So I, oh, he has. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah, I've I know a good amount of people in that. Uh, I could go on and on and name dropping people, but yeah. I'll just stick but that, with that's okay. That's okay. But they, yeah, they aren't here for the airtime. So, <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah, cool, small world then. 
Yeah, well, it's uh, the acting community locally. Yeah, it's it's kind of a lot of people know each other, and that's why every now and then I have to be careful who I badmouth on here. Because <laughs> <laughs> no, you never I, know, I they could be coming in tomorrow. Anything. What's that? I said, you don't know. They may be coming in next week or tomorrow and be like, oh. That's yeah, true. About oh, that. yeah. Man. It's, it's <laughs> kind of it's like the uh, it's kind of like the local comedy community. Speaking of which, Gary Wood, still not here. <laughs> uh, no, no, no messages. So hopefully, hopefully, Siri's got it together and she'll get you here on time, Gary. We're Dramatic looking forward entrance. to seeing you. Yeah, d- yeah d- just fashionably late. Which is what I classify of all of you that are listening. They probably will hate me for saying this, but I consider myself fashion be late. And I was like, oh, I may be late today. And I'm like, oh, I can't be late for Mr. Don Smith. No, that, and, would, that wouldn't be good at all. I'd say fashion be late is uh, my tango. <laughs> I'm going to be in trouble. I just realized I picked up my notes for the show and my news stories. I was getting ready to do the comedy rundown. And I realized that I have apparently picked up my wife's homework off the printer. <laughs> so... <laughs> That will be a comedy and, and show when you get back home. home. Midnight, so. Oh God! That'll so be a... hopefully this was not due today. <laughs> I was gonna say it'll be a comedy show once you get back home. Oh yeah. <laughs> Where's my homework? Oh, oh wow! That's... Keep me we'll tuned in that for that. There. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna record that. That'll be a special episode of the podcast because I... <laughs> the language won't be able to make it over the airwaves. So. <laughs> Stay tuned. So I think I think I'm going to go ahead and do the comedy rundown real quick, and we'll take a quick break, and uh, we'll be back in a little bit. Are you into making music, videos, or podcasts? Are you a local comedic talent in need of some much-needed publicity? Are you a behind-the-scenes professional interested in audio, video production, graphic design, and public relations? Eventide Entertainment is actively seeking talents, clients, and professionals to help our business grow into something truly special. And we want you to be one of those. For more information, go to facebook.com slash eventide entertainment or send us an email at eventideent at gmail.com. About three hours ago, our nation came under wide attack by unknown foreign power. Coming this summer, when biological warfare threatens extinction, the world needs a hero. Inside this bag is the cure for the zombie virus. Ta-da! I'm going to save the world. How about you? William Lee is Zachariah Stone in Cinema Lexicon's Six Feet Below Hell. <laughs> Your kind is doomed, human. <laughs> one ugly mother- Really? Starring William Lee, William Regglesworth, Banza Townsend, and Aaron Perez. Six Feet Below Hell. Available in Redbox this summer. If you see someone that you know is dead, they might come back to life. Run! <laughs> All right, we are back on The Life. Uh, I'm your host, Don Smith. Uh, the Life is a part of the Inter- Eventide Entertainment Podcast Network. Check them out at eventideent.com. Uh, I'm sitting in the studio with Haroon Khan, uh, going over going over some of his past films. I'm, I'm looking, uh, we're, we're, I'm just checking out all the names to see if he's legitimate. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I may or uh, may not be. May or may not be with this really long list here. <laughs> Uh, no, but no, I've, I've had a lot of the, uh, a lot of the people have been in the studio. A lot of the people on your list have been in the studio. So, so I, I, I think you have some, you have some good, uh, some good credits here. And then I'm, I believe you now. <laughs> I was a little, Whew. I was on the fence before. No, I've so I, I wasn't no, sure. I don't have but... to worry, but now you believe me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you didn't know you had to do that much convincing, <laughs> did you? Yep. It's, it's, it's like another acting gig, but yeah, we, we were talking off the air a little bit about, uh, about. Uh, auditions yeah and oh. being being in little cramped quarters with lights on you like you're a uh, suspected of a crime or something so it felt very ncis csi because i was actually saying like this studio feels more relatable and like i can breathe well 
auditions, other it just feels like you're being interrogated, read this, and we may or may or never talk to you ever again. Exactly. Um, yeah. So that th- the fun fir- first one I ever went on, I thought was going to be my last one. I thought I, d- I don't want to do this. <laughs> I I, <laughs> I feel the same way every time I still. I'm like I may never do this again. Yeah, um, well, I, I do that with comedy. Every time I get <laughs> off stage, it's like it's the last time I'm doing this crap. And with the radio show, pretty much every time I go off the air, it's like I'm not doing this again. <laughs> but I, I we keep coming back because I th- I think it's uh, people <laughs> people like you and me are addicts. We <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we or just, they can't get rid of us. One or, or the other. Yeah, one or the other. They can't they can't seem to find a way to get rid of us. Uh, and we can't seem to find Gary Wood, who is uh, still not in. Uh, I'm still waiting the dramatic entrance yeah. of here I am. Yeah, he's he's going to come flying in any moment. And <laughs> maybe he's trying on that dress they had in the lobby out there. I'm still trying to figure out what that's uh, there for. It may be a good fit. It it may be. Maybe that's, that's why we're waiting, because he's going to come in in his yellow uh, princess dress and just wow us both. <laughs> I'll be dazzled. He may he I he may have a date by tonight if that if he keeps that's, that up. That's true. That's true. From me, <laughs> <laughs> or or he's getting ready for the Fifty Shades of Men show that you at, mentioned at earlier. Yeah, yeah. That that could be it. He's getting ready to. He's going to be down there waving dollar bills. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not even sure if it's that kind of show. I, <laughs> I'm not going to find out because I won't be there. But you should go because <laughs> because it's Wiley's, and it's a great place to be no matter what. Uh, I know we we were talking a little bit. How, how, what got you started in film? Why did why did you decide? Hey, this is for me. Oh, tough question. Okay. Yeah. Uh, ba- actually, funny story. Growing up, I actually hated uh, film, entertainment, acting. I really? thought it was one of the most stupid professions, if not the most stupid profession. Growing well, up, I can't argue with that. <laughs> Because I figured, and this, mind me, mind you, this is me, uh, six, seven, eight years old. And I'm sitting there thinking, um, why do you want to pretend doing something every day? Why not do something substantial? And I'm not joking around when I actually wanted to be either a basketball player, uh, an astronaut, or a secret agent like James Bond. I <laughs> And I really meant that. I wanted to be one of those three. See, and, that's the beauty of film, is you can be. Which I realize now... <laughs> And then growing up, I was like, okay, I am good at basketball, but I messed up my knee a bit. So I'm like, okay, basketball's down the drain. Uh, really don't like science, so I really don't want to be an astronaut. Though that stuff is fascinating and cool, not cut for me. And then I still really wanted to be a secret agent. And then once I had a brain, finally, I realized I legally can't really do that. And I really don't want to join the black market or any of the other stuff. So yeah, that yeah, dream has wanna... passed. So then I actually wanted to be a surgeon. And like a doctor, like from high school, once I got into college and then that ship sailed. And I figured, you know what, I'm in college now, let's just try this acting thing. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. Because I've always been surrounded by theater. I've never been surrounded by film. I've been surrounded by theater. Um, having a sense of family in New York, family and friends going back and forth. And I figured, let's just try film and hope for the best. I, have and you performed live theater? I have. I won't say the name of where, but I have performed once, and it was the biggest embarrassment of my life. I oh, did pretty yeah. well, actually, but I was actually the backup for someone because the primary person did. He you had. Were the um, understudy. Yeah. yeah, he had. I was understudy. He had laryngitis or something, and uh, he was losing his voice, so they put me up, and I was doing well. But at a certain extent, I had forgotten my lines, mm. and I still improved, and all the. Thankfully, all the other cast members just went along with it. But every single person, it was a, it was a four-figure crowd. It was like oh, a thousand man. some people, and then everyone in the theater knew I had messed up, but I still went along with it. And just that fear of messing up again is why I don't do theater until I grow more confidence. Because just knowing if I mess up, everyone's gonna know, and I'm like, which is why I respect for theater actors personally it's, more. It's it's tough to do. It's because <laughs> it is it is. It is commitment. Because well, with film, you typically know the scene you're shooting, and that's really the only one you have to worry about. And mm-hmm. you don't really even have to memorize it because they kind of film little snippets and put it together in post. So you don't really have to know your lines quite as well as you do with theater. Because theater, uh, one of my, one of the favorite shows I ever did in theater was uh, Complete Works of William Shakespeare Abridged. I don't know if you've ever seen it, but the premise is. 
there are three actors that are attempting in two hours to perform every single Shakespeare play. Wow, that's ambitious. And it's <laughs> <laughs> it, it's it's really crazy comedy, and there are a lot of opportunities to go off book. Okay. But the thing is, you have these opportunities to go off script and ad lib a whole lot, but at the same time, you have to be able to bring it right back on in the script. Mm-hmm. So and kind of budge it back in. Even though I had freedom with the script, I had to know the script better than any show I've ever done because you had to be able to get right back on track. Mm-hmm. And that was that was one of the things that made it my favorite show, but at the same time, it was one of the one of the most difficult to perform, even though you had a lot of freedom with it. I was going to say it's probably a challenge in with itself or a blessing in the sky. Yeah, you can go off script, but you know you best come right back. Yeah, exactly. Somehow or some way and bridge it back in. Yeah, but. and exactly. And that there was there was one part of that uh, play which was a lot of fun. It's kind of what got me interested in trying to do stand up comedy because one part in the play, I'm actually left on stage by myself, and there is oh. nothing scripted. Oh wow! And they basically said entertain the audience for about five minutes <laughs> awesome <laughs> good luck so yeah that was uh and the thing is i wanted to i wanted it to be kind of spontaneous and kind of a surprise for everybody including i mean the director wanted to know a little bit about what i was doing but i wouldn't tell him much and i never did anything at that moment during rehearsals uh, i wanted it to be that spontaneous just like that and it was a it was a lot of fun it was a lot of fun doing that, and it was absolutely terrifying. It's like it's, one of those good, terrifying feelings because yeah, yeah. that's the same way when I grew up with theater or watching theater. I got that joy more from theater than film, which is why, because um, I think you had asked me what made me get into this. And three years ago, once I came, once I did my very first film, I think I was an extra in tra- a, a John Travolta film called um, uh, I Am Wrath. I'm pretty sure is what it was called. Oh, okay. And since then, the bug has bit me, and every single day I have uh, somehow, some way, people have been humbling and grateful, and I professionally do this now. Cool, cool. And uh, fast forward, here I am. Three right. years still acting, barely, uh, <laughs> and then modeling. I think that's all acting. It's just barely. Just barely doing it. Uh, Gary Wood has has made it into the studio. I just saw him <laughs> running past the window, and I thought he's got to poop again. But no, <laughs> but no, he stopped and came on in. <laughs> I uh, yeah, I, I I found a, a men's only bathroom and a ladies bathroom. You found a men's only bathroom in a ladies bathroom? No, there's over over <laughs> as you come in. There's actually individual like a men's room and a women's room. Yeah, yeah. And my girlfriend's we, with we me today. We have some of those. I, was, I ran into one of those. She was very excited that we were going to get to use the same bathroom for the first time ever in public. <laughs> and then she was disappointed that I actually found separate yeah. facilities. I was going to say she'd have been disappointed because there is a uh, wall in between, so you won't get to hold hands. <laughs> <Why>? <laughs> so are, are you guys at that point in your relationship where you can, where you can poo together? Is that's, that really? We, is that, we only poo together. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that's I, it, we, it helps. To we've agreed to hold it like uh, if we're not together. <laughs> that's, Sorry, that's you guys good. are having probably having some <laughs> really intellectual conversation about acting and art. Yes, and we were. Thanks for coming. I in walk in and we talk about poo. poo. Yeah. <laughs> Tone shift. That's we're used. To, we're used to that on the, on the show. <laughs> well, it's good to see you. Hey. Uh, this is Haroon Khan. Hey, Haroon. How are you, uh, man? Gary Wood. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we were talk we were talking about auditions and uh, what how we got started in acting and all that craziness. Now you've you've done acting or just filmmaking? Uh, I've only done acting out of necessity. <laughs> uh, when you know, my like, first movie, I had a uh, and... two actors that fell out of the same role. Um, oh wow! So I ended up in the morning of a big shoot where we had the entire cast together in a pivotal location, and there was no way. That I wanted to reschedule, <clears throat> and he he. No, I've shifted speaking on the, I've of two, shifted on the he couch was sick. before and had two Cheetos fall out of the same roll. That's <laughs> nice. Uh, so yeah, then I was like, at that point, I'm like, you know, just you know, I'll do it. Just step in. <laughs> Luckily, and do I, it. I fit. Yeah. So. Okay, because I thought you had done some film work. I wasn't sure if it yeah. was all just filmmaking yeah. or if you stepped in front of the Yeah, I had too. to for that one. Uh, I didn't really want to, but I did. I mean, it was fun. I enjoyed it, you know. And, of course, stand-up, I love, you know, doing that. 
but yeah. Yeah, when you when you going up at Wiley's? Oh wow! I mean, you own the place. You could probably get staged. Yeah, I could, and that's the weird part. Yeah, (laughs) (laughs) connections. Yeah, that's the weird part. It's like um, I don't know. I feel like because when I when I was considering buying the club, I was like, okay, I'm gonna get back into it. I'm gonna get some stage time. I'm gonna you know eventually in you know go back on the road a little bit here and there. But then when I get there, I'm like, you know, I feel like I'm taking stage time away from the other comics. You know, not to mention too, I'm also like grooming and instructing and tell you know and i don't want to have to go up there and go you know uh do as i say not as i do because <laughs> right you don't want to go up like, there and God, bomb you suck i'm not listening to you <laughs> exactly gotcha so. gotcha so i actually so. talked to karen i'm going to be going back up october 8th. really the first time first awesome. time at, on stage at wiley since march weird because i this is total coincidence but that night is free veggies night at Wiley's. So we're going to have uh, tomatoes and uh, squash. Awesome. And, uh, Are they going to be like somewhat rotten? So yeah. You can th- yeah. That is nice excellent. and cushy so they don't hurt so that bad, is, but they make well, it I'll, I'll wear I'll wear my best suit. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, say, I'll definitely be there now. <laughs> All right. Yeah. yeah. yeah we'll be, have a full house that night. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Every, well, I would say every listener to the show, but yeah. then we wouldn't have a full house. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, there's six. There's four of yep, us in all, here. All three of you. And most of you have been on the show. Yeah. So I think getting back to acting, not to hijack the whole thing here. Oh, I think I, I've always said that, you know, act, com- comedians, for the most part, make really good actors. You know, I mean, you look I agree. at yeah. Robin Williams and, uh, you know, I mean, they're just because they're, they act, you know, most of them are acting on stage. It's all a version of themselves or a right. character, you know, that yep. they do. And they do it. You know, seven, six, five days a week, depending on, well, back in the day, it was seven days a week. But in L.A., I'm sure the clubs are open a lot, you know, pretty much every night. <clears throat> I'd say a lot of, even like a good example, like I said, was Robin Williams. Mm-hmm. With like Robin Williams, even like the more current ones against like Kevin Hart, Dave Chappelle. Yeah. Like they're already used to that rigorous schedule lifestyle yeah. and they're all obviously in the entertainment business to begin with. Yeah. And it's so and, funny, too, because... When you look at, you know, like the the awards and the Oscars, it takes them so much more to get even a nomination, you mm-hmm. know. I mean, Robin Williams was nominated several times, and then he finally won for Supporting Actor, mm-hmm. you know, for uh, Good Will Hunting. But you look at some of the things that he's done, you know, and even not just stand-ups, but also just comedic roles and comedic movies, they don't get the attention in the Oscars that, uh, you know, that the serious stuff gets. And I remember back to A Fish Called Wanda, when Kevin Klein won for supporting actor for a fish called Wanda, and that was huge for such a funny role, you know, mm-hmm. and a goofiness. Yeah, that was John Cleese, wasn't it? Yeah, John yeah. Cleese, yeah. Which is like you said, it's a rarity because it's more either like romantic or action e yeah. roles. Uses the serious roles. movies, yes, the dramas. Yeah, the dramas. Yeah, screw drama. Yeah, that's what <laughs> yeah the that's drama what in my doing. life. <laughs> they, they, they were watching a musical out there earlier. I don't know. Yeah, could you hear are. it? Oh, yeah. We yeah. could hear it in the studio. Oh, that's the yeah, I heard it down the hall. Every now and then I'd get up and just start dancing. <laughs> and uh, I was glad they had my dress ready out there when I came in. <laughs> you I'd you look, know what I movie it was, I look good in right? yellow. I do. I do not. That was uh, Beauty and the Beast, the, the live action uh, with uh, Hermione. Oh, and, okay. uh, that's probably why I felt the sudden. And the, the cheesy uh, <laughs> video game looking um beast who looked very handsome as a beast he was a very pretty beast well yeah you don't want an ugly beast yeah, well, that just I, wouldn't think, be, I think yeah. the term beast kind of says <laughs> you do <laughs> but not these days <laughs> yeah that exactly. would hurt somebody's feelings yeah we need to have a handsome beast yes we need, did you, did we you need see that did you see that beast. we actually watched it the other night we watched it for the uh, it was on it's on netflix the new I, one i probably won't watch yeah, I don't blame you. Because for um, one, it's Beauty and the Beast, and for another, it's it's a musical. Yeah. Well, that's what that's, I said that's, when when we watched it, and they start like singing, like, oh, my strikes. God, it's a musical. That's like eight <laughs> strikes against yeah. it right there. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm a huge fan of Mel Brooks, mm-hmm. and Who? when they did, redid the producers as a musical, <laughs> I was furious. That was good. I don't mind musicals if, they're, if they are entertaining, first of all, <laughs> mm-hmm. and if the songs are kind of inherent and organic to the you know, and if it the, doesn't like to feel the story, not just yeah. story for no reason, break out into song, which you know is I, most. I think most my musicals. well, my I think my biggest issue with the producers as a musical was uh, Matthew Broderick, <laughs> <laughs> who brought absolutely nothing of himself to that role. <laughs> because if you watch the original producers uh-huh. with Gene Wilder, oh God, yes, Matthew Broderick's performance 
was yeah. basically and, him poorly trying to mimic Gene Wilder. Yeah, and that can't happen. And no, yeah. he's just he, no. What was it? What's the word he keeps using? Keeps using. I'm ex- I'm upset. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and I'm wet. <laughs> yeah. I'm hysterical. I'm hysterical. I'm hysterical. That's and now I'm wet. And I'm wet. <laughs> and I'm hysterical. hysterical. And I'm wet. <laughs> Great Dang. movie. The yes, first one. The, the musical, not so much. Yeah. But uh, uh, well, I gave I gave uh, out of a, on a scale of five, I gave Beauty and the Beast a, a number two, which is right, what I also right, uh, assigned is, to yes, my yes. Uh, my sit down bathroom right, breaks. Business, yeah. yeah. I was on the teeter potty earlier. <laughs> teeter potty. That's better than the tilt potty. I like that. the tilt toilet. I like the teeter potty better. Tilt the toilet. I'm going to die. Yeah, we, we have we have a uh, there there is a commode down the hall. Really? In one of the restrooms that uh, it's not attached to the wall very well, so it's kind of like a challenge. <laughs> yeah, especially for some guy who's about 300 pounds, you know, sitting on that thing. You're because you know, I know that if there's somebody on the other side, I'm lifting them up. <laughs> Which is fun because we just they have no idea. <laughs> that's, they, that's why it's the you know, you know, you know who do, I bet you know who doesn't listen to your show. Uh, the right state uh, maintenance staff, I think. Oh no! That, well, Ooh. I would think some of them do because I used to be one of them. <laughs> really? So that's probably well, that's why none exactly of them will why listen. They don't. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, he's on his radio show. We're not listening to him. Yeah. Did, did you All know right. that up until uh, June? No, I, I didn't was, know that. I was a uh, really? HVAC tech cool. here at Wright State, hmm. wow. and I ran away. <laughs> So you guys feel free to get back to your artsy talk. You don't have to just oh, talk about poo and toilets. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently. That's all that acting is, just poo and toilets. Yeah, so speaking of that's poo, a, let's talk about acting. <laughs> uh, well, we can we can hit some news stories. Uh, we, I mentioned that earlier. It seemed like it'd be excited, you'd be excited to hit some news stories yeah. so we can, we can go across some of them. Uh, this first one I found was, was kind of found it kind of fun. Uh, rapper B.O.B. Hmm. thinks the world is uh, flat and he's hoping to put your money where his mouth is uh the rapper just started a gofundme campaign called <laughs> show bob the curve <laughs> uh, that aims to help help the celebrity non-scientist uh quote purchase and launch multiple satellites into space the campaign started friday with a gold raise two hundred thousand uh, dollars he figures that's probably again quote Enough for a small economy class satellite, you know, just something for day to day use, nothing too flashy. Uh, so far, the response to uh, the, the response has been as flat as Bob claims the planet is, only raising about two hundred and twenty five dollars. <laughs> wow! I don't okay. think he can get a satellite for that. Okay, admittedly, I, um, the I world stopped, is flat. I, I stopped guess. listening after you said the rapper called Bob. Yes. So I saw maybe a few words right in front of it. As soon as he said <laughs> yeah. flat, I was like, "And it's B.O.B. Okay, what are you?" So saying? his name is Bob. Is that it's is B.O.B. That, no, it's B.O.B. It's, it's actually it's, pronounced B.O.B. Yeah, I mean, B, I, B period O period B period. It's B.O.B. Okay. Yeah. So it's, I can't I can't say W.T.F. Right. I, I don't okay. see. Can I say why W? Not? Can I say W dot T dot F dot? Yeah. Would that, yes. would that you, work? you have to wrap it though. You have to wrap it. It's like. <laughs> oh God! You know, there's some clever rapper names out there. There are, but what know? about Bob? <laughs> Bob is your name. I B like how we talk the B. Oh, more God. about his okay. name then, than what he actually so, said. Right, right. Yeah, we were worried it's, about the name, and it's like this guy thinks the world is flat. So could, the story is that he he wants to go fund me a satellite. Is that it? A several satellites. For to the purpose of yeah, proving that the wants, world is flat, yeah, wants to launch, launch multiple satellites. In okay, for two hundred thousand dollars. Can I just I say know. that this is probably a pub? I actually I take that back. I hope <laughs> this is a publicity, like just gimmick or stunt, just to get his name out there even more. Yeah, because this makes. I, would I mean, his letters. This it's his letters out there. This just yeah. makes no sense. Like. Why would you do this? Why <laughs> to the people that I say that, that say the world is flat? I always say do this. What do this? From where we're standing right here, just head west. Just go west. Just keep going. Keep going. We'll see you when you get back. Yeah. Go as fast as you can. Yes, that's actually good see if advice. You can catch yourself. <laughs> I I have no B O B. I have no comments for this. Oh I, I'm more fascinated by because I have listened to a little bit of his music and personally. Oh, I, so this is like this is so you actually something. know him? Yeah, yeah he's he's really? not as. I may get flack for saying this, but he may—he's not as big, big as like other name 
Oh, you artist. can say that. Right. I'm with you. Yeah, but I've never heard of him. I have listened to a couple of his tracks, and I don't remember the names, which probably is not a good thing. Do they have anything to do with the world being flat? I hope so. Now, I hope honestly, <laughs> You're go this back is. And listen. I hope this is where he drew this theory from from other past songs, because if this is just <laughs> random, I fear for not only him, I fear for his name and the dots in his name. Yes. Well, I I am always concerned with dots. I and, weep and, for the future. Rapping dots. <laughs> that is bizarre. Just ladies and gentlemen, B. Uh, it's Bob. Yep. Welcome, Bob. Yep, Bob. I've heard lots of bizarre stuff, but nothing about a GoFundMe Bobby. campaign. For his name really like is Bobby. I got my researcher over here oh, doing okay. some research on her name. Is his name is Bob? It is pronounced Bob. Yeah. Oh, Bobby. Bobby. Okay. Oh, so yeah, but, but, but his rapper wow. name is B O B. <laughs> that doesn't so you, help the yeah, cause. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> You got to research the whole thing. <laughs> Jeez, researcher is terrible. <laughs> you, know, you can't get good help. Uh, okay, uh, Benny the Bunny, a five-year-old Holland Lop rabbit, has been trained to dunk basketballs by his owner, uh, Shea Asor. Uh, he was recently honored with Guinness Book Record for most basketball slam dunks in one minute by a rabbit. How high was the hoop? Uh, <laughs> uh, Benny doesn't confine his talents just to the basketball court. He can also paint, comb hair, play arcade games, and even vacuum up his own poop. <laughs> so, Why is it always back to poop with you? I don't know. That, well, it's a rabbit. At least he's vacuuming it up. He's, that's a clean rabbit. Yeah, that's a clean. Uh, the real that question is, is does rabbit. he have a consistent and healthy diet of carrots? <laughs> he, he would have to. Do you rabbit think so? pellets. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you're, you're not going to train a rabbit to slam dunk a basketball. If they have a good I just, diet. Is it reg? It's got. It, it would have to be regulation, or it can't count for well, Guinness Book. Is that's he, that's is my he, theory. How is high he was the hoop? the ball? Is he dunking it, or that's is he just? Is it a free slam throw? Dunks. Slam dunk. Like dunks. a normal size basketball hoop? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah, uh-huh. I think it's the same rabbit that was on uh, Monty Python's Holy Grail. <laughs> killer rabbit. <laughs> yeah. And he was he dunking made, the holy hand grenade. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, the holy hand grenade. The weirdest, part, Antioch. the weirdest part about that story was this is not the first time that I've heard that story. Really? <laughs> I actually really? heard this yesterday. Oh, oh okay. it was big. It was all over. Yeah. yeah what yeah, am I doing with my life? Then? <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting this a rabbit. Stuff, this story's bigger than B.O.B., I tell you that. <laughs> I can't imagine that. Nothing's and you said he was a uh, um, five-year-old kid, right? Is that what you would uh, a five-year-old rabbit. Oh, he's five-year-old. Okay, so five-year-old <laughs> rabbit. The wabbit. <laughs> yes. The wabbit. What a role, ben, what a good role model. Bunny. What a good role model for young yeah, kids. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. For, other, bet, for young I wabbits. I bet he didn't take a knee during the anthem. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, man. I heard uh, that the NASCAR, did you see the big thing about NASCAR? Yeah. All the NASCAR drivers stood, uh, you know, for the national anthem the other day. Got, got the whole great applause. But then I'm thinking, that. well, there's not a lot of, not a lot yeah, of black NASCAR drivers. Say, it's, it's NASCAR. <laughs> A lot of rebel flags. Yeah. But yeah. Not yeah. A lot of, not a lot of yeah. black NASCAR yeah. drivers. Say the for fans. The flag while there's a rebel flag painted <laughs> on your car. I was going <laughs> to say the fans will need to bring their own accessories because they're already going to be there with the rebel flag. <laughs> yeah. And everything else. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, did, I did hear about that. I thought, uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I am so shocked that NASCAR would do that. <laughs> what? How can you say such a thing? <laughs> Oh, okay. This <laughs> this is going to be good. Yeah. It's poo, isn't it? This is going to be good, ladies uh, and gentlemen. This week, news... Do you talk about poo when I'm not here. No, it's, I don't. It, you bring so it. Just you bring the, the poo, Gary. The poo yeah. effect. <laughs> uh, um, boy. It was a news story. It just happened to fall after the rabbit that we just had just to mention. Fall could vacuum. Yeah, the vacuum just happened to drop. <laughs> rabbit dropping. <laughs> Uh, this week, news broke about the mad pooper, oh, a, fe- Jesus. <laughs> a female jogger in uh, Colorado, Colorado Springs, Colorado, who has been terrorizing families by de- defecating <laughs> on their uh, on the outside their home on, Again, on a weekly basis. Not the first time I've heard this story. <laughs> Wait, is this legit? I, I believe this it. is true. This, these are true stories. <laughs> Absolutely. I, this is not her fake excuse, news. On what the was line. her excuse? <laughs> Actually, Gina read this to me. What was her excuse when they caught her? She said, oh, they... She they caught her? They and she was like, her. sorry. Yeah, go ahead, read the story. Okay. <laughs> go, I'm sorry, we didn't mean to interrupt your little no, news. That, your little news. My little news story. <laughs> since you've already heard it. Why don't yes. you? <laughs> <laughs> Dateline. He's heard this one and the past one, probably heard the Dateline next one. Dateline Pooville. 
<laughs> anyway, Lieutenant Howard Black of Colorado <laughs> Springs, Colorado, said that this isn't an isolated problem and that the woman has been pooping all over the neighborhood. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> uh, Colorado Springs Police Department has been uh, asking residents to try to take photos of the jogger to help identify her. Hopefully in the <laughs> Hopefully pose. in the they should probably <laughs> in the I think they should actually get a specimen and, you know, do a yeah, DNA right. uh, yeah. DNA. Uh, test, oh, you, you yeah. really know your shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't say it. Uh, I stopped. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, the woman could be facing uh, charges of indecent exposure and public defecation. Pretty crappy situation, but Sherman, <laughs> the toilet paper company, has taken it upon themselves to oh. become a, quote, a small part of wiping away this mess. How on Wednesday, the... I on Wednesday they tweeted, if the mad po- pooper turns herself in, we will give her a year's supply of TP to help her with her runs. Oh, my God. <laughs> How nice, convenient nice. for them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, but yeah, there is an update to that. They did catch her. Yeah. Uh, the, the, well, I, no, I take that back. They didn't. They don't have her in custody, so to speak. Okay, okay. Uh, okay. But they did uh, confront her, the, the people that she is that, And wasn't it only one yard? I think it was just one yard. One yard? Yeah, oh. the story that, that we read just was the, just the same family. Just, yeah, yeah. For some reason, oh she used the same, the same yard. And, well, uh, I mean, once you're comfortable with a restroom, you don't I, need to, you know, I, yeah, I don't. If like I'm to in go, a public place and yeah. there's several restrooms, I'm going to find the stall that I'm find most comfortable. An, yeah, like in, and find, that's the one. Find a nice use bush every time I'm there. Yeah, I Three agree with you on that. With that? And that's, I think that's what she was doing. But yeah, they finally uh, they took pictures and then they they caught her in action, uh, oh, and was... she was like, "Oh, I have a condition. Sorry." And then she pulled up her pants. Probably <laughs> didn't wipe. Uh, I'm thinking, did she wipe? Oh, that's right. Yeah, she oh keeps my the stuff God, in her pants. Story. She keeps toilet paper in her pants. <laughs> Three things with why, this. What? One, yeah. why does she have to be a poop nomad if she's comfortable with that backyard? Nomad. So why not just stay <laughs> over there? I want a T-shirt. That says, two, yeah, I'm a poop nomad. I'm a poop. I'm a proud poop nomad. Two, <laughs> two. I don't know if this is disgusting or wrong for me to say, but I kind of want an autograph, not from, <laughs> but not from. Her hands, like I don't want to take it from her hands. I want to take it from someone who has a glove on their hand oh. and give it to me then with their clean hands. Because I just want to say, I've met a poop nomad and you haven't. <laughs> That's nice. true. That's and true. And three, of a poop nomad. I hope there's a picture somewhere where it like caught her in action. Yeah, that, well, like, they said they did. They think of yeah, a framed they photo of her yeah. doing that. Oh, I don't know if they caught a picture of her in action, but they did. They do have pictures of her running. Uh, you know, and then the the family. I I bet they probably videotaped her if they caught what her. A, what a role model! So. <laughs> yeah, but on, on the plus Chris side, though, Benny the bunny role model to the mad. Pooper. On the plus side, though, their yard looks fabulous yes, because the fertilizer. Green. They don't need really, mulch or anything she, else. She's, she's eating right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so Mother Nature loves the mad pooper, I yeah. guess. <laughs> you think right. that uh, who's who's the company that Miracle Grow? You think they? hire her as a sponsor yeah there you go but no Charmin's stepping <laughs> yeah. up so they'll, we'll get this one way or another <laughs> your lawyer looks All right. like crap I, yeah. <laughs> on that note I think it's it's definitely time to take a break and uh, yeah that's enough said we'll I'm going to go visit the bathroom leaf. All, right, right. <laughs> All right, go, uh, go you poop nomad we'll be back here shortly <laughs> are you into making music videos or podcasts Are you a local comedic talent in need of some much-needed publicity? Are you a behind-the-scenes professional interested in audio-video production, graphic design, and public relations? Eventide Entertainment is actively seeking talents, clients, and professionals to help our business grow into something truly special. And we want you to be one of those. For more information, go to facebook.com slash eventideentertainment or send us an email at eventideent at gmail.com. I love it when I hit the wrong button when I'm trying to go back on the air. Because <laughs> it's that extra little delay there, and then a little cuss, and then I'm back. Uh, we're back on The Life. I'm your host, Don Smith. The Life is part of uh, Even Tide Entertainment Podcast Network. Be sure to check them out at eventideent.com. Uh, I'm still in the studio. Haroon Khan sitting across from me. Gary Wood's still in here, and we are now Whoa. joined by Naeem David. Did I get that one right that Yes, time? you Okay, right. okay. Two for two is pronunciation. Two for two. I'm doing all right. <laughs> You're one of the few people that gets it right on the first try. Yeah, that's so exactly those, what those, I said. Yeah, all right. Well, I'm I'm doing good, Gary. I'm doing good. <laughs> you are. You're bilingual. I'm, I'm proud of myself. <laughs> <laughs> practically, <laughs> you practically mastered the language. Yeah, at just point. about, just about. Uh, <laughs> now, you, uh, Naeem, you're, you're a director. Yes. Have you have you done any acting? Because we were talking about that. So I saw a little bit on there, and I just heard Haroon chuckle. So I'm guessing, <laughs> yeah, he, he uh, he's questioning your acting ability. Is I, I think in what that means. It's because I'm a better actor than him. 
Oh, okay, okay. I am no comment. I'm not going to see <laughs> SmackDown coming. Yeah, we're going. We're going to start Cage match. some problems in here. Uh, what What have you directed? Um, I've just done. As I see a whole long list here. So. Just my own short films, just little things here and there. Uh, that's why I brought in Haroon for Dilemma to make it grander and bigger and keep working on bigger projects. Okay, you might want to move closer to that mic so it picks you up a little bit better because it's these things are tricky. Isn't that the sound man's job? Can you hear me now? Who's, who's the sound man? Oh, I thought that was you. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, I'm yeah, not. We don't I'm have one of those Wileys man. either. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, how long have you been uh, directing, um, and what got you started? For a few years, um, I've always wanted to be a, a filmmaker. Um, started writing back in high school, and I never picked up a camera to actually film something until my first year of college. Hmm. So I've been writing. Uh, since I was probably 15, oh, writing wow. short films and features, and then not until college I was able to pick up a camera and make something. Cool, cool. Now you guys work together. and we worked on. You, you guys seem, you seem to have a uh, a good working relationship here. That's... Fortunately or unfortunately, that's for the viewers <laughs> to decide. But I'd say, yeah, we've worked on um, actually fun story. We... I actually met him uh, for the first time ever once I came to UC, once I came to college. And it was uh, the first or second semester I saw him. And the interactions, like, you know how you meet someone early on and you don't see them after a while? That first interaction isn't that grand. That's what our (laughs) interaction was. It wasn't as grand. It was just, oh, hey, we know of each other's existence. And then... After a so you while, you just kind of scoffed and went your own way. We like scoffed, but it was like a remembering. It's stuff. like describing like, oh, uh, our first meeting. Yeah, yeah, pretty yeah. much. And then once <laughs> something happened to where the film gods above, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what happened. He kept <laughs> messaging me twenty four seven, seven. You know, like he wouldn't AKA leave me the alone. Film gods. Yeah, those, yeah those <laughs> let's make something. Actors. Let's make something. Again, and finally, I was like, you know what? First meeting, Don. F it. <laughs> I'd yeah, say, yeah, oh, you he kept pestering yeah. me until I finally let you on the show. It was, it was, yeah, it was the beard. <laughs> yeah, it, it was the Civil War beard that yeah, you had. Yeah. But no, yeah, I've known him for probably three years now, and we've worked on a couple of smaller projects, but Dilemma being um, by far the biggest uh, production wise. And uh, yeah, proud to call him not only a friend, but a director, writer, and a fellow filmmaker. Cool. So when you looked at him dressed like that, you automatically saw the uh, the hired killer. You're thinking, yeah, that's, uh, that's what he needs to be. No. And, oh, okay. No. <laughs> no, I just, uh, no. But I uh, I wanted to write something that he can, you know, play to his strengths and a stoic, more absent character uh, fit, the, fit the part for him. So I wanted to write something for him. I, did, I think that was kind of a backhand, yeah. backhanded compliment. Like, yeah. Did he say yeah. absent yeah, character? Kind of an absent a character. Zing on we that didn't one. really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we wanted to write something that he could, you know, that he could do. So <laughs> man, that was tough. <laughs> you're such a great actor. I want to write something where you're not there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> honestly, <laughs> Gary, you're not wrong. Uh, but no, honestly, I guess. To outside viewers, that may sound like, oh, he just got zapped. But in, like in our relationship, that's actually it's love, love. compliment. It's, 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 it's actually love. love. It's love. And so somewhere. Yeah, there's a lot somewhere love deep down, story. it's love is just a process of finding it. Uh, but no, I, I'd i say of the few projects I've done, um, Dilemma is probably up there in terms of the character. I enjoyed playing that character. On screen, you can't see that enjoyment because his character isn't as jovial. Right. Um, but being someone playing Alistair so you're Ross. Not, you're not a, a jovial hired hitman with a first dilemma. <laughs> <laughs> I wish, but yeah, you're maybe on the next upset version. About the thing. Yeah. So but no, I, I, enjoyed, I enjoyed playing the role. Yeah. There are some comedic hitmen. That's true. Yeah, then they're, 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 they're a lot of fun. Bruce Willis in uh, Whole Nine Yards. Yeah. There in you the go. whole nine and a half, ten yards, or whatever that one was. I like that movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I, I was watching one with the, uh, I can't even think of his name, the British, British guy. Uh, Works with Nick Frost a lot. I cannot think Simon of Simon Pegg. Simon Pegg. Yeah, there were there was one with him where he really? was a, where he was a hitman. Oh yeah, yeah, I saw that Kill one. Kill me three times yeah, or yeah. something like that. Fantastic. Yeah, he was a horrible <laughs> shot. <laughs> yes, he was. That terrible. was the hitman. That was a horrible <laughs> shot. That was awesome. Yeah, so yeah, there, there are some. Com- you could have pulled it off. You could have pulled off a comedic hitman. Yeah, in a, to... in a, in a, he's not in funny. A, in a sad drama, <laughs> he's not. He's funny. not funny. <laughs> 
he's 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 not wrong. I give him. I give. That's one of the few. I'd say I'm witty. I'm not funny. I'm witty, but I'm not funny. That's. I I would actually. This is history. This is one of the few points I actually agree with that. I'm not funny, but I'm witty. So I'm. We're making history mm-hmm. on the show today. That's good. And we're not talking about poop. There you oh, go. You missed the last hour. It was. <laughs> They were talking about poop on it's twenty four. Yeah, we we got we got more news stories to get to. Oh god. <laughs> Wonder <laughs> those, you know. But no, it was it's, you know, Steve Martin's bit about the, the turd museum. <laughs> <laughs> they got a lot of sh in there. Yeah. Some of that crap's worth a lot of money. Good. Moving All right. on. Literally. <laughs> you done? See, Gary, <laughs> Gary always brings a show down. That's why I bring him here. We we get we get too so elevated. High and he's, he's, yeah, too highbrow. Yeah. You need me. Yeah, that is to come that in is here. true. That is true because we're always talking about the important issues. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I don't even know where I was. Gary, you got any? I don't know. Probably something about poop. <laughs> probably something about. Uh, so what what projects you got working on now? I know you're working on Dilemma. Is that one in the can, as they say? Or uh, no, it's in post right now. Um, we're working on editing. Getting everything right. See, I squeezed in another poop joke. Right? So I, yeah. I, I didn't say anything, but I caught it. I noticed. <laughs> uh, Sorry. <laughs> uh, and then, meanwhile, probably going to work on another short film as we're in post on this one, just to just to keep the momentum going. Yeah, yeah, just uh, yeah. Just you got to keep making busy. them. Got to stay busy. And keep they keep getting bigger and bigger. So that's good. Now, do do you have anything that's going to festivals or anything? Dilemma's going into festivals. Dile- Dilemma's going into festivals. Yeah. Dilemma's going into festivals, and we actually want to make it into a feature eventually. Cool. Um, cool. Down the road. Have you have you done have you shot features? Or? I have not shot a feature okay. yet. 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 Because that, that, that dun, that's, dun, dun. yeah dun dun dun. We're <laughs> looking forward to it now. <laughs> it has to happen now. So uh, I think so too. Haroon's not going to be in it. No, nah, I'm I'm garbage. Well, yeah. I, well you you want to make sure he has an, another absent role. <laughs> <laughs> just give them all to me. Yeah, I actually gonna, made. I don't yeah, know. If he will play. That. He will play every character you got that's not in the script. I, He's I, gonna I, be Eddie Murphy and Coming oh. to America playing every single character. Might as go. well. Yeah. I actually made a picture. I don't think I posted it yet, but it's like one of those pictures where it's like saying, "Like, give me more. Just give me all those absent roles. I'll take them. <laughs> oh, no one else will take them." So, so someday you're going to get a phone call. It's going to be, "Hey, I just wrote the script, and there's a character that's not in it. You're perfect. <laughs> yeah, you're perfect. For I think you fit the role. It's yours exist. if you want it." <laughs> and you and you say, "Hey, as long as I get an IMDb credit, I'm." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the character, yeah, the character is not yeah. appearing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not but, appearing in this film. No, yeah, we plan on uh, yeah, the reference there you to go, uh, yeah. Holy Grail. So. Happily named, <laughs> which by Happily far named, is also a good not movie. In this film. Uh, but no, yeah, we plan on dilemmas uh, eventually to uh, festivals and give it a mini festival run, and then down the road, the way we've been describing it is this is pretty much it's around half an hour, uh, the short, but we're saying it's pretty much like a elongated trailer of our feature when we do plan on making it. Um, just so people get a small taste of a 30 minute taste of what's to come. Uh, stay tuned kind of to the bigger, broader picture of the dilemma world. Um, but as a short, I think it will definitely for sure will fulfill, I fulfill our expectations, I think. And hopefully we'll do the same to everyone watching it because there's not that many romantic thriller genres locally that are produced. It's either romantic or a thriller, and there's not a blend of both. Um, yeah, and you need that because sometimes when you're when you're being thrilled, <laughs> you, need to be you need a little romance in your in your thriller. <laughs> All right, uh, do, do you guys have? Uh, where can we find some of your past work? Is it just? Um, <clears throat> my work is on YouTube, so you can on find YouTube. Yeah, YouTube. What's your What's your page? Uh, so, it's it, my so we name. can actually put your name. It's my name. Okay. Uh, name, name David. Yeah, I can write it down for you. <laughs> I, I think I, ha- I have it on your resume you gave me. Oh, okay. And this great. is the first time anybody's ever given me a resume when they've. Come you know, when I was driving up here, I realized yeah, I'm, not a lot of people would bring their resume to you. Stand out and probably yeah, interview, yeah, and yeah. I figured. Yeah. Not to mention, probably Might a lot well of your guests don't have resumes. Happen. That's so, true. That's true. that. A lot, I'd, say, I'd say a lot of my guests really <laughs> haven't held many jobs. I, I, I don't have a resume. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I keep up. My resume my... is uh, see Don. Yeah. <laughs> Talk to Don. Yeah, he'll give you more money. He's an idiot. <laughs> 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 All right. Do, do we want to hit a couple more news stories? 
Yeah, sure. Why okay. Not? Now Let's the, go for it. The next several, I promise you, no poo. <laughs> <laughs> I can't promise you much else. But <laughs> no no poo. Settled. Uh, this mishap may have may give a new meaning to the weightlifting clean and jerk. Uh, a man wow. working out in a German gym uh, got a very sensitive part of his body uh, stuck inside a five and a half pound weight plate on Friday. Uh. <laughs> According to officials, firefighters spent three hours using a grinder and a vibrating uh, reciprocating saw to free what was widely reported as to have been the man's penis from the center of the disc. Widely reported. Uh, widely reported. <laughs> now, here's the now, does that mean it was <laughs> the rather name large? Of- Widely. The name of the fire department, the town he was in, is the uh, the Worms Fire Department. <laughs> Not a typo. Uh, <laughs> fitting. Uh, but it shared shared a photograph of the shattered weight to Facebook following the delicate extraction, urging gym goers to, quote, not imitate such actions. <laughs> oh, wait, the weight shattered? They cut it to pieces, oh, yes. They, Jesus. they had to, uh, they cut it, the cut it to pieces to get they it off the weight piece. to pieces. Not, yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, he not well, I don't act, know. He, at, he, the, uh, at the gym? Was it publicly, like, working out in front of and just right then and there, or? There are a lot of questions, and I have no answers. <laughs> that's, why, <laughs> that's why I bring it up to discuss well, it, so we was, can get uh, to the bottom of this and this investigation of how this man got a five and a half pound weight <laughs> stuck to his junk. I don't know what he was trying to do, but he nailed it. Yes, it, it, like was, one of, it was one of the metal it. with the hole in them. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Fit so, for all things, yeah. I, can, <laughs> I guess. Fit one size does not fit all. <laughs> yeah, I was I was just wondering what he was trying to work out. Mm. Uh, yeah. Maybe, yeah. yeah. I mean, this is, we have, uh, I mean, we... There is a female in the room, so I guess us four knuckleheads may not. <laughs> well, like, if he was. That's all right. If he was trying to curl a weight with his Johnson, I think he's probably got a stretch Armstrong. He yeah, might have just been. Yeah. Yeah. Did he not or like slinky. stretch or war- warm up beforehand? I don't know. That's that's all part of the story that we got to figure out. I'd say he had to. My, that's not a, a little the, bit. My question is, what puts you in that mindset to put your junk inside? <laughs> <laughs> I really, really <laughs> like <laughs> that weight. <laughs> Yep, the man Whether it be is, publicly he, or he's privately, a he really likes working out. The metalhead. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, if he's, that, that, if he's that ambitious to like do that, you'd think he'd do more than five pounds. Like five pounds for come yeah. on. Like, yeah. well, I, he's, personally, he's, I would have he's to use a, a fifty or sixty yeah, I guess pound he's, myself. He's a beginner. You got to start out somewhere. How many? Yes. How many? Fifty, sixty at least. Fifty, yeah. sixty, yeah. sixty-one, whatever it takes. Yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm not jealous. <laughs> <laughs> but I, you've never had to have it cut off. Uh, the Not way, yet. The way. Yeah. I, I, I'm just curious to know what this guy is like, if he's married or, or what his family like. I don't think there is no family. Yeah. I, I would say if you're just, I, I think it's, himself I think it's just him. Hello? <laughs> and his lonesome himself because, yeah. I mean, you have all that time to think and you think about sticking. Yeah, have have all that time to think about where can you put this next. <laughs> well, I bet he's not allowed back in Lifetime Fitness yeah, anymore. Yeah, yeah, Planet, Planet Fitness has banned him. <laughs> <laughs> How I mentioned earlier, I wanted the autograph of the Mad Pooper. I kind of want an autograph of this guy. Also. Yeah, well, Just, it's uh, you, of, you want an autograph and a piece of the actual weight. That's not of the actual. Uh, well, not we the actual uh, weight. Sanitized. Uh, san- yeah, sanitized. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh my god, my researcher actually has a photo over here. <laughs> there it is. There is a the picture of the weight. of oh the actual god. weight. <laughs> the pieces. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Oh, my See, God. like I said, I'm not making this. You can't make this kind of stuff up. Holy God. So next time when I go, I was actually telling him uh, last week that I've been put on a bulking diet to gain 25 pounds. So now when I religiously go to the gym, that's going to be engraved in my head. Every, I'm going to look at a five-pound weight, and I'm going to know some guy in this world full of 8 billion people did a deed like that. And I'm not going to be able to get it stuck out of my head now. He was probably preparing for some heavy sex. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe his. Damn. No, maybe I'd, his I'd maybe say... his wife is huge. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say I'd say if you're doing that, you're probably well, not it was only five pounds much. though. Yeah, it was only five pounds. I was gonna say, like, if you're <laughs> sticking something in there, then there's nothing at home to go to. But it's always you know, it's always about the reps, not the not the weight. Yeah, that's that's true. It's that's true. It's how many reps you can High do. Reps. That's how, that's how you build. He probably did like yeah. fifty or sixty reps before he <laughs> tried to pull it out and had to call nine one one. Yeah. Penis oh, down. Man. I, just, I just wish I was there just to see this spectacle happen. I mean, and if see, it, I'm glad we got to see a picture of the weight because one of my questions that I had because was it the Olympic style? 
because <laughs> oh the Olympic style weights, those have a hole it looks about like, that big. Yeah. And that would impress me. Yeah, I think it was not. <laughs> but no, it was <laughs> one of the little not, yeah. It was one yeah. <clears throat> it was one yeah, it was one it's of the little, little you know, and so was the weight. Yeah, I'd need one the size of a beer it's can. Not myself, impressive. But, no, it's not uh, impressive. Not impressive at all. Because yeah. I mean, if, if it was do Olympic that. size, yeah, that's impressive. I'd be impressed. Well, probably, yeah, that's it was probably like a, something you'd see at Wiley's tonight. If you, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, tonight, for, 50, for shades, 50 of men, shades of Men. Bring your own weight. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> bring your own five and, and a half really pounds. Really oh, man. <laughs> uh, Speaking of autographs, by the way, did I see an autograph out there of Biff Tannen from Back to the Future? <laughs> yep. I believe there is one Tom out there, Wilson. yes. yes. What, what was he him. doing here? Yeah, he's, a, he's a stand-up comedian now. Is he? He's very funny. Hasn't he, been on my show. And he's a guitar player. He's got a song that he wrote. And the song is called Stop Asking the Question. Because, like, in the song is made up of all the questions that he's been asked. Like, what was Michael J. Fox like to work with? Uh. Uh, what was this? And he's like, it's a movie. <laughs> so, did, they, did the car really fly? <laughs> Things like that. No. The car didn't fly. <laughs> what? Are you serious? <laughs> don't, don't ask me. I don't know the questions he's been asked. Yeah. Okay. Spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't yeah. seen that. Yeah. <laughs> the car doesn't really fly. It's. <laughs> Uh man, there's uh, we'll look, we'll look for a story out of Tennessee now. Uh, oh, Halloween, ho- what's that? I said this one won't involve poop. Then no, no, no. Uh, <laughs> Halloween arrived early in one part of Tennessee and sparked a panic nine one one call to police. Because who else would the one nine one one call be? <laughs> <laughs> Don't have an emergency nine one one call to your mother. Uh, <laughs> anyway, moving on. Uh, Joseph Lover gives. Lover gives. Lover gives. Lover gives. Lover gives. Lover gives. No yeah, way. Lover gives. That's. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, jo- Joseph. Joseph Lover give. Uh, what a his, name. His, his Halloween display yeah, of, next was of a man who had been decapitated <laughs> oh, God. by his Greenville Homes garage door that was so lifelike that his neighbor Johnny Riddle. <laughs> this is all. Huh? You're 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 you're, you're faking BS. this. No, you're this faking is this. Not fake. News. You're making this. Is up. Lover this gives. Is just... Mr. Lover gives. Is the first name B O B. Yeah, B.O.B. Lover Gives here. Nope, Joseph. J O E. J O E. Lover Gives. About Mr. Riddle. Johnny Riddle. Johnny Johnny Riddle. Riddle me this. (laughs) Uh, Anyway, Riddle said, I thought it was somebody laying up there on their driveway. Uh, Deputies showed up at Lover Gives' house and soon determined (laughs) that the body was a Halloween decoration that the homeowner had put out more than a month early. Wow. The department shared the the photo of the display. To Facebook and warn residents not to call nine one one reporting a dead body. <laughs> well, that didn't instead work. congratulate the homeowner on the display. So, <laughs> so yeah, that's Tennessee. If you wow. uh, so remember this, wow. if you ever want to decapitate somebody, just lean them up against your garage door, <laughs> and, <laughs> and that'll get cool. the job done. And if you ever want to live in Tennessee, apparently you can't have a name like Smith. Right, you have to be Lover Give or Riddle. Well, I don't well, that's, understand. That's half the reason I, I kept that story is <laughs> just the names. I love names like that. Johnny what was, Bubberknob. What What was Hello. the one guy's name we had? And I think you were in for this when we had a guy's name that was. Oh, yeah. Uh, I can't even. Yeah, remember Yeah, you now. find it's interesting so names, yeah. and well, it's that's, always that's half yeah. the, fun. That's the half guy that saw a UFO. He's got the weird name. Lived in a trailer. Yeah. You know, it's always. Yeah. What I don't nowhere. understand is like I, uh, for like, Christmas or Thanksgiving or New Year's, people start decorating weeks before because it's a lot of decorations. It's a, I guess a bigger event or holiday but why do people gotta especially with like halloween stuff you know it's gonna scare people why do you have to <laughs> dress your house up like a month in advance and then get the cops called on you why not I guess. is it <laughs> it's tennessee there's not a lot to do now it's against the law to put a fake, yeah. yeah i mean all those people drive by and they well, see a body standing I, like sitting out there yeah. nobody says anything nobody yeah. approaches it i mean there's surely there must that's, be yeah, blood that's what i'm saying if, it, if, you're, from, if you're wanting to kill somebody around halloween so how do you get a name like Lover Gives though? Because like you know, like Carpenter, you know, you you're apparently like back, your ancestors was a carpenter. I would say he changed uh, he was the name. a love giver. Lover, he was yeah. a lover giver. Lover, yeah. lover giver. I'd say <laughs> he, he probably chose above. that name. He was himself. maybe it's his mom's and like, name. I just remembered the name we were thinking of the other What's guy that? that was Meow Meow Gamo Di- Meow Ludo Disco Gamma Meow Meow. That oh, was a, that was a geez. name in an actual news story that I read. His name was his meow, first name had to be Disco Gamma Meow Meow B O B. That was his name. It had B O B meow. Give her a Wait, you just yeah. pronounced someone's name? Yes, <laughs> that was somebody's legal name. I'm in the sorry, news story whoever this person he, is. He was from Australia. His full name was Meow Ludo hyphen. Mm-hmm. Meow Ludo hyphen. Disco Gamma Meow Meow. There's no way that's his legal name. <laughs> There's no. 
I that's a can a researcher look that up? I imagine <laughs> writing that on disco, like documents. Gamma, meow, meow. I'm going to Why change my name legally to G A R Y. Yeah. What are the what I want to know is what are the parents on? He got bullied. Yeah. Oh yeah. He got that bullied. was a child of the '60s. I'm thinking. <laughs> That is a cool name. Like, how many people are named Meow Meow yeah. hyphen? I don't think it's cool. I think that's just, I think <laughs> that's just mean. That is. That's on the mean. best part? On every part. On every single part See, of the I just, I aspects. wonder if his parents gave him that name or if he chose that name. I think because he chose Because I think name. either way, because if you're, if you're going to change your name to mm-hmm. anything you want. Yeah. <laughs> meow Meow. Why Meow Ludo Disco Gamma Meow Meow? I, Unless yeah. it I mean, was, why, why you know, not it Joseph been, Lover give? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it could have been like uh, right Peekaboo Street, the uh, the the skier, yeah. you remember, the yeah. Olympic skier. Yeah. They let her choose her own name. She was like two before she she chose a name, and she chose the name Peekaboo. So they could have been like, "What do you want us to call you?" And the little one year old's like, "Meow, yeah, gamma, gamma, blah, blah. Yeah, because he couldn't quite talk yet. <laughs> yeah. He couldn't formulate and just, words. Yeah. And just he just thought he was a cat. Yeah, why do my people parents, do that too? Uh, did this to me for ten years. My name was. <laughs> <laughs> it's not now. <laughs> That's what I've been hey, little, little, little. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Please welcome to the show, <laughs> Wood. <laughs> he, she See, found she him. Found, you found Meow Ludo Disco Gamma Meow Meow. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. That's a it solid so three and a half. Is he a rapper? <laughs> I bet he's a rapper. No? no With a name like that, he should be. I'm leaving. Mm. Um, right. Ladies yeah, and gentlemen, I, 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 can't I, think forgot that. I forgot the reason. But there yeah, must be we something. covered that There's story something. here. He had his, his bus that. pass for the, uh, for the, that was in Sydney, Australia, I think. Wait, what does he do for the, like, what? Oh, his, his transit pass? I yeah. thought you said his transit pass, like he wants to yeah. insert his past into his hand. What's that? Sydney? Yeah. I, I thought wow. it was Sydney. Yeah, Sydney, Australia. Yeah, Australians he, are he, dumb. He, he was wanting to in, get an implant in his hand. For the his uh, his basically his bus pass. Well, who's stopping? So can... Yeah. Well, so that so that he didn't didn't have to what carry a... it with him. Well, I guess <laughs> the only thing that could stop him nice is hair. his name, if that fits. Yeah, yeah, and he get it on the pass. <laughs> it, it all went marm. <laughs> wow, I'm yeah. speechless. I I don't blame you. I, hate... <laughs> I I don't know what to make of this. That's well, it, this is the life. This I want to do that to my car key <laughs> on the end of my finger. That'll work. Name is meow, meow. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, name. <laughs> yeah, come here, meow, meow. Uh, all right, I think on that note, we need uh, we need a little bit of uh, Mr. Wiggly's exploration launch <laughs> for the next break. Yeah, it's been a rough one. It's been so a rough one. So last show. time you were here, we did some Neil deGrasse Tyson chicken. Uh, I like in, that. In case you've never heard of uh, Mr. Wiggly's exploration launch, they are Dayton's number one space funk band. I have they not. Because, to, because they are Dayton's are only space funk band. They need to do a show <laughs> okay. at Wiley's. Yeah. Not regular funk, space funk. Space funk. Space funk. You Can you tell me the difference on. between regular funk and space funk? Oh, you'll find out as soon as I play. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. This this is uh, uh, Go to Mars with me. <laughs> by, <laughs> by Dayton's original uh, space funk band. Mr. Wiggly's Exploration Launch. We'll be right back here shortly. Go to Mars. Thank you. 
making music, videos, or podcasts? Are you a local comedic talent in need of some much-needed publicity? Are you a behind-the-scenes professional interested in audio-video production, graphic design, and public relations? Eventide Entertainment is actively seeking talents, clients, and professionals to help our business grow into something truly special. And we want you to be one of those. For more information, go to facebook.com slash eventideentertainment or send us an email at eventideent at gmail.com. Coming this summer, when biological warfare threatens extinction, the world needs a hero. Inside this bag is the cure for the zombie virus. Ta-da! I'm going to save the world. How about you? William Lee is Zachariah Stone in Cinema Lexicon's Six Feet Below Hell. <laughs> Wigglesworth, Banza Townsend, and Aaron Perez. Six Feet Below Hell, available in Redbox this summer. If you see someone that you know is dead, and they come back to life, run! All right, I think we're back on the life. I think something was playing in the background or I'm losing my mind. I'm probably losing my mind. But anyway, we're back on the life. I'm your host, Don Smith, sitting in with uh, Gary Wood from the Yo. legendary Wiley's Comedy Club. Hello. Also sitting in with Naeem David and Haroon Khan uh, talking about basically all kinds of weird stuff. Pretty much. But there's a lot of <laughs> lot of weird shit. We, we, we cover a lot of ground. When I walked in, it sounded pretty classy. It sounded like there was some heavy talking. And then you got to- Yeah. <laughs> And I got here, and then you got here. So from now on, your guests are going to be going to be like, "Hey, you want to come on the show?" And they're going to be like, "Yeah, is that Wiley's dude going to be there? <laughs> is the poop guy coming?" Yeah. <laughs> about no. Uh, so we'll hit some more news stories just for the fun of it. We were we were talking a little bit about Mr. Wiggly's exploration launch, and that led into discussions of Mike Canistero, who is uh, if you if you haven't seen Mike Canistero on stage, he was he, funny. Is, he is hilarious. Or, yeah, he comes up pictures. with some stuff. I wanna, and just his delivery 
allows him to get away with stuff that mm-hmm. if I tried it on stage, yeah. I'd get run out of the club. <laughs> but his delivery, just the way he does it, he's so goofy funny that yeah. it's hard not to <laughs> He was part of the roast of Cal Westray, and oh my gosh, he was funny. I yeah, really I think enjoyed he, him. I think he said sometime in November he's going to be at Wiley's. Okay, cool. I'd like to get him in there. Going to be doing, I think he's going to be closing out one of the Wiley Sunday Oh, cool. I just saw him well, post. Well, I'd like to get him in the prime time and also, like, uh, what was the name? Mr. Wiggly's. Mr. Wiggly's 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 Womp Rat. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Wiggly's <laughs> Exploration <laughs> Womp Rat. Mr. Wiggly and Womp Rat. They, that's that's should, <laughs> they should come to Wiley's. This is <laughs> Mike, if you're out there, call me. Yeah. Call me. Call me. All right. Uh, the idea of uh, this back to news story. So, you know. so we're we're done with you, Mike. No, <laughs> uh, no, but it, you should get out and see Mike Canistero somewhere on stage. He's fantastic. Uh, or if you want to take a uh, if if you want to go to Sinclair and, and take a chemistry class, you might have him as a teacher. Uh, mm, teacher of chemistry. Th- yes, he is a chemistry Very teacher. Interesting. interesting. He's a real job. Yeah, you think he's been saying he's not doing stuff. comedy a lot. If you- <laughs> Ooh. Oh yeah, actually, an uh, education, okay. career, yeah, probably yeah. family. Yep, yep. Uh, the idea of undiscovered underwater cities isn't as far fetched as you might think. I thought I saw somebody wearing the dress out there. Oh, they are. Oh, somebody is wearing the dress. The Beauty and the Way Beast. Way too into Beauty and the Beast. Beauty and the Beast. Yep, that yeah. some, somebody is trying my dress on. <laughs> I am so upset right now because I was going to wear the she's, exact same thing. She's going to stretch it out. Yeah. I think it would look better on you than her, honestly, I think. Oh, I, I don't think that's even possible. Uh, <laughs> anyway, the the idea of undiscovered underwater cities isn't as far-fetched as you might think. It just turns out they're built by octopuses. Wouldn't that be octopi? I, th- I would think so. Actually, I've had a conversation about this. Oh, uh, Drops the knowledge. Oh, I'm going gonna, gonna to name drop here. John, uh, who is Celeste's brother. Explain to me. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's octopuses or yeah, octopi. John. There's only one of them. And B O B. It's it's spelled B O B. His name is J O H N. Octopuses is correct. Is it really? Is it? Yes. Octopuses, I, not yes. octopi. No. Oh, okay, okay. You can say octopi, but octopuses is correct. So well, that's probably for you're two. James Bond from the eighties, then it'd be octopussy. Yeah. There you go. Yes. Yes. Uh, Which, if there's more than two, two though, it's octopuses. Octopuses. O- uh, octopiece. <laughs> the octopiece. Okay. Uh, earlier this month, scientists published a paper describing a site in Australia's Jervis Bay. Jervis. That's that's a good name too, Jervis. right there. Uh, near Sydney, my, where my ten to job, fifteen, Jervis. ten to fifteen gloomy octopuses. <laughs> they weren't upset. That's what they're named. They're actually called gloomy <laughs> octopuses. They're not just having a bad day. That's. I they, thought they were having a bad day. The species they're name is a gloomy octopus. Some mornings I feel like a gloomy octopus. Yep. Eight tentacles. Why did it have to be Son eight? Of a... <laughs> <laughs> I'm a gloomy this octopus. This one's just not cooperating today. <laughs> anyway, they they I love it. my tentacles <laughs> and I can't do a thing with them. <laughs> anyway, they discovered ten to fifteen uh, gloomy octopuses living at uh, quote high density and exhibiting complex social interactions toward one another. The species, also known as Octopus Tetricus, I guess because you can stack them up. <laughs> like Lego blocks? Yeah. <laughs> like Tetris. Yeah, oh. with that annoying yeah, song Octopus playing. Octopus Tetricus. Uh, they communicate, fight, and even evict one another from their dens in a settlement formed around exposed rock patches. In That's other a reality words, show. I've in other that. words, it's basically <laughs> an octopus city, which biologists are calling Octlantis. Octlantis. <laughs> because that's so great. Uh, they, they it's a reality show called uh, Big Octopuses Survivor. That's all. Yeah. They live yeah. in a house yeah. together and Survivor. they have to evict one. Octopus. They have, they have <laughs> challenges for head of household. Yeah. And, yeah. 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 Big big brother. It's, it's big. <laughs> I'd watch it, actually. Big Octopussy. Yeah, big <laughs> That. You saw where I was going with that. <laughs> Am I that predictable, Gary? Uh, <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah. What do we think of that? Are these... Uh... Honestly, this is probably not the most bizarre news. I'm I Honestly, I'm going to say this actually sounds like normal. Yeah. Because I've normal. actually heard of a report. Um, I don't know if there's octopus... <laughs> <laughs> Octopudy. Uh, say Octopudy. Yeah, I don't even know if there's, if there's an octopus. Octopudy. I don't know say if there's octopudy. octopuses in like the uh, UAE. There's a city in the UAE called Dubai, and they have like their man-made islands. And right, I've heard reports like they. I, I don't know if it's because of them or if it's other creatures, but they do the same thing. Like because of all the sand that's dumped, if there's creatures below that help um, form or kind of keep that maintained. Hmm. And 
I guess they are in a way uh, illegal immigrant workers as well. <laughs> <laughs> Migrant workers. Migrant worker octopuses. Do you think male octopuses get resent being called an octopus? I would, yeah. I would. Probably. I'm an octoman, okay? Yeah. Octoman, yeah. pal. Call octopus. Yeah, I will not. We have, a, we have a new superhero. <laughs> octoman. I'm going to punch your ass. Octoman. Not Aquaman. Well, I'm going to octa knock you out. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna hit you eight times. <laughs> this swing once, except there's one which is not cooperating. <laughs> there goes the princess. There's the princess. <laughs> well, she, so that's what they were doing. She's got a gig, and uh, she was in there uh, pumping up with guess, the, yeah, with the so. Beauty and the Beast. So. She's yeah, in there like I gotta get in my zone. Yeah, gotta get, get in the beauty, the, beauty zone, bell zone. zone. That's what. <laughs> Did you? What's going on down here? Did you see this thing? They've got a little uh, vending machine. I walked in, and it's like it's win Raider gear, right? But there's a line. And a camera, I mean, somebody is yeah. a genius. Wow. I saw that walking yeah, in. I thought it was like a tour. The line to get through. And I was like, hey, where's the radio station? And it station? can't be just like T-shirt. There's got to be like, it's wind Raiders gear or an iPhone. Something no, no, because it, no. You're after right, it's Raiders gear. Because like one of the, I asked one of the students, I'm like, what's going the on? And they're like, are you a student well, here? Not not those Raiders. And I'm like, no, <laughs> but right I may be Raiders. with all wow, the gear. Did you say, no, I'm an actor? I should have named dropped. I should have like, no, no. not the students here. I'm an actor. You should have name dropped, I'm here. Don Smith show. Who? I actually did. I actually did oh, the say I'm here for the live the show, and they're like, "What?" And I'm like, "Yeah." And so, but she was like offering me like this gear. I'm like, "No, I'm not a student here. It would be wrong." And they're like, we're just giving them away. Just go ahead and take it. And I'm like, should, should this is time it. for me to run. Like, I need to get to this show. No, I'm not joining your call. But there was a there was a big line. Like, it like wrapped I'm, around. Uh, like I'm open to any sure. free Raider gifts that anyone wouldn't yeah. like to. Yeah, uh, bring them by. Bring yeah. them by the station. Yeah, any, I'll, any free I'll be here till uh, till one. Yeah. So. Yeah. Or is it two? There's it's two because yeah. it's after I don't, one. If I you're don't here do, till one, you're gone. All I don't right. do time. Yeah, <laughs> we <Clearly. noticed. laughs> We noticed <laughs> thirty five minutes into the show, <laughs> and you weren't here. By the way, uh, and you went running down to the bathroom. Schedule one of the. Oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. I was an off. No, go, you do your little. Oh, you do your little stories. I was. No, you you tell us tell us what's on your mind. Oh Harry. well, I was just going to hit some of the the highlights of Wiley's. Okay, uh, hit, hit us with hit us with some highlights. Family club because we've got a full week this week leaving. You know, we're leaving September. It's fall. I don't know if you've noticed yeah, this. Or not. I, yeah, and like even though it's ninety some degrees, ninety some degrees, but also very dry. So I don't know. Like yeah. this morning, the wind kicked up and the leaves were literally falling, <clears throat> and it just turned fall. So I think you know we're gonna not gonna it's have like any, they knew. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but we're not gonna have any fall colors this year. I don't think. I think all the trees are gonna be leaves are gonna be gone by mid mid yeah. to early October. Well, they're being baked off. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, and dry. <laughs> yeah, they fall uh, one but no, way or this, another. Tonight yeah. we have something very exciting going on at Wiley's. It's the first I time heard. since I've been here, yeah. and I for one, I, uh, I I've brought a lot of baby oil. <laughs> if I, you know, that's I know. good because I was wow. I was kind of thinking you'd be taking the stage. <laughs> I'm, I, yeah, it's my stage, right? <laughs> I'm gonna get up there. Yeah, yeah. I own the place. I can do what I want. Yeah. Put your shirt back on. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's male dances, and you've got boobs. Um, yeah, yeah uh, we got hair, fifty. So it's okay. Fifty shades of men are going to be up there. They're going to be rocking the place. They're going to be swinging their genitals left to right. Are there really throwing them over their shoulders? Are there really fifty shades of them? Uh, we're going to find out. Um, you're going to um, test yeah. them. You're going to have these forty-seven have swatches. Forty-seven, forty-eight. Yeah, <laughs> every yeah. single shade is represented. Yeah. You know who? That's good that you're so inclusive. Like I, that. you know, <laughs> you know what guests we should bring to that event tonight? What? Yes. The, what? What? Do you want to come? You said. <laughs> You want Haroon to is, is always down for that. Uh, the, <laughs> oh, hey. No, not dancing, me, man. but I know one of, he's actually a friend of all of us. The guy who was at the weightlifting guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> He'd yeah. be perfect for this. Yeah. yeah he's he's probably still kind of on that and yeah, He could swing his five and a half pounds around. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's if his drunk is. If you've got is, some junk, if it's still there. You should no, yeah. be dancing for money. It's actually going to be, <clears throat> it's, 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 I'm going to go ahead and say it. I know that we're in a, you know, in an era where we have, people that identify differently than, you know, what, I don't know how to say that properly, but I think this one's primarily for the ladies. I think you can go out on a limb here, but then again, you know, everybody's welcome. So, yeah. Don, you're yeah. perfectly welcome. I know, I see the glint in your eye. You're, well, like, you're, you're recording it for me. Yeah. So I'm gonna, <laughs> for your personal stash. I have to watch that in slow motion. <laughs> wow. Fifty Shades of Men, wow. I will okay. be providing. Because I want to uh, make sure it's all Fifty Shades. I, I will be providing. I don't want to make sure that they dance it's 48 too. Shades, I'm going to be mad. 
48 and a half. 48 and yeah. three quarters. I think it's getting a little hot. In this uh, yeah. And actually, we got a special deal for your listeners for, for tonight, actually. Well, there you go. They, can, they had a Groupon out there. I don't know if it's still out there or not. You can check if there's a Groupon. But no, if it's you a just, Groupon, not a Groupon. A, yeah, that's <laughs> completely. That's once the show starts. Yeah. Uh, but it's uh, a Groupon for 40% off your tickets, which makes your ticket, I think, $12, uh, which is bad. off the, the door price, I believe. Uh, anyways, norm, the door price is twenty five dollars. Uh, you can get them online for twenty dollars. But here's what I'm saying: I'm saying we're going to honor that Groupon price. So if you go online uh, to Wiley'sComedy dot com and you order your tickets and you use the the promo code Hot Guys, I made that up. That was mine. That's clever. And it was describing me, but right. But it I works for those guys too. Uh, hot guys, <laughs> plural, all caps, no space in between hot and guys. Hot guys. Right, uh, because you don't want any space. <laughs> yeah, I don't want any space between me and the hot guys. Uh, so, and you get you get forty percent off your tickets, so you can't beat that. And then you come and you have a good time, and then you uh, go get all worked up, and then you go back to your significant other, and and everybody's happy. Yeah, it's not a bad it's deal. Forty percent off. Yeah, it's hump day. Other, go back to your significant other, and she says, "Where have you been all night?" <laughs> uh, <laughs> you smell like. <laughs> <laughs> I started it. <laughs> Whew, caught that uh, one. Okay. You smell so, like you've been at the But then gym. tomorrow night we got so actually you're, they, they were here last week. Wow. Uh, 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 Tim and Kyle from the Nicholas yeah. Pod, Nicholas Cage podcast. We did one last week, which was so yeah, much the, fun. The Nicholas Cage movie review hour. Yeah, so we're going to try. Uh, I guess Ryan has always wanted to do this, and we're Wiley's is providing him with the means. We're going to do a you live taping, live recording of the Nicholas Pod Cage uh, re- movie review, and we're going to review Gone in sixty seconds, which should be fun. Probably not as fun as. On air, come on! But well, yeah, Connor but, you know, was a blast. Okay. yeah, but uh, but they're going to review uh, Gone in sixty seconds. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be live. So come in. We need you uh, to make this work because um, you know we need to have an audience, right? right. To, for laughs, so your laughs and and probably your comments too. It's not like it's you know going to be silence all around the place. So uh, you know that's going to be fun. And it's then this invaded. weekend, yeah, this weekend. Oh man, this comedian we got coming in. What's with the princess, by the way, since you're... Yeah, <laughs> we got a person came in. Okay. <laughs> nothing to report. We don't either, so... <laughs> Back. <laughs> They're just... Golf cart parade. A golf cart parade. Is that just golf carts or people riding on them? So it's just golf carts. Hmm. How do you get your hands on one of those? Yeah. That's <laughs> a lot of ideas. We may have to investigate that. Yep. <laughs> Yes, so, right. uh, Brian Scalaro, if you've watched TV, you've probably watched Brian Scalaro. He's yeah, been I was, on. I was just saying, I, I just started watching Dexter oh. because I'm a little behind the times. Oh, my. And you're, I'm, in, oh. I'm in season two, and, but you're and doing here a good he comes thing. as a lab tech. Yep. It's Brian Scalaro. Yep. Oh, okay, well, there you go. Yeah, he was in Dexter. He was in Mad Men. He's been in the middle. He's been on Wizards of Waverly Place. Really? Disney. Yeah, I love that show. Uh, man, he's been, there's more. I mean, he's got a huge IMDb page. He's always kind of a, uh, I don't know. He's always, he's, he's just funny usually, you know, although he wasn't in Dexter, you know, hey. but, but anyway, but, uh, yeah. And extremely funny. I mean, I think it was somebody recently called him the funniest effing guy on the planet. <clears throat> and if you look at his bits on YouTube and stuff, he is very funny. So very excited. As a matter of fact, he's so funny that we're doing four shows this weekend with him. We're going to have a Friday night. Uh, two shows Friday, two shows Saturday, seven fifteen and nine thirty. So that's going to be awesome. Cool. And then, uh, of course, Sunday is our open mic night. <clears throat> and if you're not coming to open mic night at Wiley's, you are missing the boat because that's, that's where it's at. Yeah, it's a riot, and it's always a big crowd. Uh, it's only five bucks to get in, and you get a full range of comedians. It's it's like yeah. it's like the first few weeks of American Idol auditions. Yeah, that, you know? that, that, that's 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 a great way to put it because yeah. there are some nights that says the last Sunday we had somebody get a little upset because he he was uh, he was I wasn't there. I oh, wish I had he, been there. He, but he was uh, and melt down a little bit. Want to hear? He he yeah a little little bit. He he was up there dissing the stage, dissing the uh, the other comics, and no. uh, finally. Uh, Karen had enough and yeah. cut him off. And, yeah, I heard Ed actually chased him Ed, out. Yeah, because when Karen and brought Karen him back went up in on stage, and he was as he was walking out, he was shouting stuff at her. Mm-hmm. And yeah, what Ed, kind of comedian Ed chased is that? Down out, huh? What kind of comedian is that? A <laughs> very a funny terrible one. one. <laughs> <laughs> he was yeah, an angry comedian. Yes, a very angry, angry comic. Uh, not very funny. Yeah. But comedian. Ed's the man. I think Ed is now going to be our our, our head of host security. and uh, head of security. Yeah, he's our he's our bouncer. But yeah, he brought. He, he, he went but he brought. You don't bring an angry comic or somebody's causing trouble back in. 
but he, did. he yeah. brought him back in. Well, not into the made show him apologize. Rig, <laughs> no, yeah, that's true. Yeah, but he made he made the guy apologize, yeah. and the guy did apologize. Yes, he so did. that's you know you don't mess with Ed. Uh, nope. Yeah, now people are going to be coming showing up just to kick Ed's ass. Oh, really? Yeah. You so tough? Yeah. Now it's <laughs> it's a challenge. Now yeah. you put the challenge out. Gary. But I'm Way also putting out the we're doing a lot of promotions too. We're trying to get more and more open micers, more and more first timers, people that never done it before, because one of our um, you know one of our guys that are regulars who's going on to now feature and he's making money at being uh, Scotty Mays, right? Oh, and yeah. we all we all know that Scotty has has been uh, is in a, doing an amazing thing. He's, you know, in total recovery from uh, you know, from drugs and booze and I guess the whole nine yards. And uh it really has and I I'm not speaking for him, but I'm assuming and I think he would probably agree that comedy has been sort of a um a uh, therapy, you know, yeah, for him. It's, it's, it's given a good, him a it's focus. A yeah. yeah, and you you know, you got to replace one addiction with another. And, you know, I think uh, comedy is probably an addiction of sorts you know, to him because yeah. he's full blown into it. <clears throat> right. And so we were uh, talking to some of the FOA uh, members at one time about that, about maybe starting a program to where this comedy would be an option. You know, it's not the option. It's not the only option, you know, right. whether no matter what it is. But you never know. People have a liking for it or. And you don't even have to go into it well, as, as I, I being. Well, I do know a, a, lo- there are a lot of comics that I know in recovery. Really? Yeah. yeah. Well, usually that starts after they uh, they they, yeah. they get get involved in that bef- as they do comedy. Well, I don't know if you I don't know if you know Jay Armstrong out of Cincinnati. I've he's, he's heard been of recovering him, yes. for years, and he, mm-hmm. he does cool. a lot of shows for uh, yeah a, a lot of a lot of clean sober shows. Yeah. Oh, really? Cool. To, well, that's uh, like uh, uh, John Wing was on America's Got Talent. John was recently at Wiley's and. On his package for uh, Wiley's or for America's Got Talent, he said that uh, being a comedian is one of the only jobs where the first thing that your boss does is offer you a drink, you know, and it's right. very true, you know, and I do it too, but I, people come in, you want something to drink? I don't mean alcohol necessarily, but I don't know how else to say it, but I, now I've gotten to work. You want some drink? Water? <laughs> but, you know, because I don't want, especially the guys that I know are in recovery, you know, and I'm offering them something to drink. No, I'm just, you know, are you thirsty? That's well, all. Besides, you don't want a drunk comic up on stage. Yes, I don't know. That's Sometimes, I think Augie was Unless they're really drunk. Good. Augie Smith was yeah. drunk, and he was then hilarious. That's Unless they perform, you <laughs> know, I think that's part well, of. Well, yeah, that, that could be a performance enhancer for some. But yeah, I, well, I Pat Oswald recently said that drugs and alcohol have made some amazing comedy. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. it always wins in the end, you know. So see, I I, I can't do it. I can't drink before going up on stage. Really? All does, I can't does, not drink before going. It doesn't help me with bravery or anything all it does is makes my mouth make my mouth dry that's, <laughs> yeah, that's really bit. all it does so when i go up on stage i heart the yeah, yeah. water and that's about it <laughs> a lot of lip so, smacking up yeah. there because that well what happened is when i was first starting out i did a show it was a it was a cancer benefit show mm. and uh it was supposed to start at like two o'clock in the afternoon mm-hmm. and they kept pushing it back because they were waiting for more people to show up mm-hmm well, we could drink for free if we were on the show. <laughs> yeah. So I was having a couple beers because I thought, well, I have a couple and then I'll go up. And they kept pushing it back and pushing it back and pushing it back. And, and I think by the time I finally got up more, there, I had more. about 12 beers in me. <laughs> and uh, right before I went up, I'm just I'm just starting out. I had probably eight minutes of material. Uh-huh. Well, we're just <laughs> starting out and because it was delayed so long some of the comedians had to leave. They had other places to be. So he comes up to me right before I go on stage and said, Hey, you do 15 minutes. <laughs> I said, wow. no, wow. I can't. I can't do 15 <laughs> seconds. Yeah. I, I stretched it out to nine minutes. And then I, <laughs> once I started repeating myself, which actually ended up working out pretty well, <laughs> cause I started repeating one of the jokes I told earlier. Cause you know, I was drunk and, uh, finally I said, Oh, I already did that when I said, this is a cancer benefit. If this was for old hi- Alzheimer's, I could have kept going. <laughs> that, that so, where you from? How you doing? So, oh, man. But, yeah, it, it was pretty bad. Well, real quick, too, I want to go through, because uh, we are going to October. I'm going to hit some highlights in October real quick, because we got some cool shows coming up. And real quick, the comedians, uh, the 6th and 7th, the first week, we've got John Poveromo, who's a hot, fresh comic from uh, from L.A., I believe. Uh, he's going to be here that week. Then the second week in October, Mr. Greg Hahn. If you're not familiar with Greg Hahn, you need to be familiar with Greg Hahn. Bob and Tom favorite, just high energy. At the end of the show, he is soaking wet from his sweat. Wow. Uh, And that's funny. Uh, (laughs) Sweat's always funny. Um, The the third weekend, which is the 20th and the 21st, we've got Mr. Mike Paramore. I think Dayton uh, is pretty familiar with uh, Mike. He's from Cleveland. He actually finished, I believe, second place in the fireworks competition. Mm. And uh, he's going to be headlining. 
Uh, and then, then, then comes Halloween. We're not really sure what to do with Halloween yet. Uh, you know, Dayton, you've got the whole Oregon district thing, uh, you yeah. know, which kind of shuts us down. However, the 27th, which is that Friday night, we're having a, uh, the dead Comics society, which is going to be a uh, comedy of Rodney Dangerfield, uh, Nipsey Russell. Uh, oh my gosh. Uh, John, uh, 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 uh Tim Wilson. Right. Yeah. So, and, and, uh, and you might even see John Belushi. Yeah. John Belushi. Uh, doing, right. Doing a version of, uh, uh, what's his name? I can't even think of his name now. Which like one? Drinking before Samurai time. or no, he, he's 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 the, going to be doing. Oh, the Blues uh, Brothers. No, he, oh, he, okay. <laughs> I give up. I give up. I've had my guesses. He's going to be singing Joe Cocker. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. So, yes, and we've also got some specialty shows coming, and th- we're trying to do some Thursday night programming. So on the fifth, we've actually got a show called Two Lesbians and a Queen, and uh, that's no, what it is. Two lesbians and a, and a queen. I'm glad you're taking the stage. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I want to have my sash. Uh, and uh, at the, on the 12th, uh, what's his name? Austin, Lucas Austin and Ryan Singer, they're doing a show called The Crooner and the Clown. And it's going to be uh, music and comedy. It's going to, And if you guys know Ryan Singer, he's hilarious. He's going to be Ryan a lot of fun. Ryan Singer is hilarious. Yes, I, if, very. Get, go, on to, go on to YouTube and watch some of his videos. <laughs> yeah, that's a Thursday night. That's yeah. the 12th. Uh, And then on the 18th, which is Wednesday night, we're actually going to have our first live DVD recording. So a clean comedian, totally clean, uh, named Rich Jones is going to be recording his first DVD. And uh, it's going to be exciting. We need an audience for that. So the showtime for that is 7.15. That will be fun. So we And and we're not done programming for uh, October yet. So we got a lot of stuff going. And, of course, oh, also I forgot the uh, Bettys and the Beards is a special show on Friday. uh, Bettys and the Beards? At nine thirty, and it's exactly what that's not a clever. It's, it's women, two women named Betty. Apparently, I don't think they're named Betty. Yeah. Uh, but two guys with beards. Nice. Uh, you know, they're going to be on there, and that's a really good show. I've actually seen uh, seen bits and pieces of it. And of course, our favorite cry for help, Dale and Ranson and all those guys. They're going to be on the twentieth again at nine thirty. They're they're pretty much every third Friday they're coming in and doing their show, and it's it's a hit. They yeah. bring people in. I mean, I'm thrilled with it, and. They've got a following. So if you haven't checked out a Cry for Help show, it's not your normal comedy show. It's a little more um, – is trailer parky an ad- adjective? I, b- I believe it is. Okay, if yeah, not, trailer parky. Be, and we, we will coin the term. Yeah, I think so. But in a good way. Yeah. Not, oh, yeah. In, a, not in a like a, you know, meth uh, neighbor. <laughs> right. It's, it's, like, uh, it's like the character that uh, uh, Larry the Cable Guy pretends to be. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Only these are the real deal. Yeah, they're not pretending. No. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm going to hand it over to you two real quick. If you got anything you want to plug, any websites or anything, and we gotta we gotta get get ready to hit the road. But uh, you guys um, have any, uh, well, any social media you want to throw out? there? Yes, if you want to follow Dilemma and all its glory, um, it's on. We have a Facebook page uh, called Dilemma Short. Um, you can find us on there. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or Naeem David and Harim Khan. I'd say for uh, make sure when you, uh, you're typing in Dilemma Short on Facebook, uh, it's in all caps. And then um, my personal Instagram is Haroon Khan with uh, dots after they and after the N. And then we're also on Facebook, um, and so is Naeem. And then if you guys want to keep on following uh, Dilemma News and Updates, uh, you can reach us there or any of the other cast and crew. All right. Okay. Don't forget when you guys are ready for a premiere, uh, you know, Wiley's is just uh, right downtown. You guys could have your premiere there. Just well, just definitely. Keep oh, and mind. one more thing, too. You guys have great hair. <laughs> <laughs> Both of you. I hate you. <laughs> this is not the first time a man has want, said this to me. combine some of our hair and just... <laughs> yeah, I'll take it. it that way. I'll take it. Yeah. But no, thank you <laughs> to proud. both of you also for the compliments and for having and us. And for having us. Thank you. It was thank good you. having you in, uh, Harun, Harun Khan. See, I was good all this time. <laughs> you were so I screwed close. Up. <laughs> now, <laughs> David, thanks for coming in. I'd Gary, like to apologize. Thank you. Always a pleasure. Actually, yeah, I'm sorry for everything. It's, we're used to it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks for tuning in, and we will see you next week. This has been the Life Radio Show on WWSU 106.9 with your host, Don Smith. 
The Life is also available in podcast form on iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher, Spreaker, Blueberry, and YouTube, as well as on Eventide Entertainment's podcast network. Be sure to like The Life Radio Show on Facebook, and if you have any comments or suggestions, email thelife1069 at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. Now get out there and enjoy some live comedy this week. You can check out Wiley'sComedy.com for all your upcoming shows. Overwhelms me. The brutal presence. Overwhelms me! Oh, yeah!